This section is actually kind of fun because basically what we're going to do is we're going to use Laplace transforms to get rid of otherwise obnoxious circuit elements and automatically include initial conditions, which is kind of fun. So let's just take a look at something as straightforward as a resistor. So the resistor has a voltage and it has a current going into it and a resistance of R. So basically the idea is I have V equals IR and you're like, yeah, I know that because I've made it this far and therefore you can assume that I know basics. All right, now for funsies, let's take the Laplace of both sides. So I'm gonna Laplace both sides of that. Now if I Laplace a function um, like V, V of T, I'm just gonna get V of S or whatever it is in the S domain. R is a constant, so it actually comes out just like it would with a regular integral. So I have R and then the Laplace, whatever that happens to be, of I. And you're like, this is kind of boring. And I'm like, I know, but check it out because it's actually not. <laughs> so I'm not actually agreeing with you. Basically what it means is I can redraw this in the S domain, not the omega, not the frequency domain. This is the S domain. So let's subtitle rewriting or redrawing circuits in the S domain. Okay, so um, we have a current coming in here. So instead of I as a current, we have I of S as the current. We have the voltage V of S here and resistance R. You're like, got it. Not shocked, but okay. All right, so that was amazing. All right, now let's do a different one. Let's say that we have a current now going into an inductor. So we have I and we have, let's call it, well, we're going to say I is going this way. We have an inductor L. And let's go ahead and denote the initial condition. I at naught equals I naught. Very exciting. Okay. All right, next step. I know that the voltage across that inductor is going to be equal to L di dt. Now, if you're paying attention, what you'll see is if I take the Laplace of both sides, on the left I get the voltage, or the voltage in terms of the S domain. Now the L comes out because it's just like a regular, um, what do you call those things, integral. And then I'm taking the Laplace of di dt. And if you're a super awesome Laplacer, you know that the Laplace of a derivative would be S times the Laplace of the function minus that expressed from the left, like that. Now, why do we care? Well, because why wouldn't you? I mean, it's kind of amazing. So, I always want to say velocity. Voltage is LSI at S minus LI0 from the left or I not. Now, why does this matter? This matters because I can basically achieve this same experience by um, drawing it like this. So essentially, come here, I and S. All right. So if I go ahead and I put in my current now in the S domain, I've got an inductor with an inductance of SL. So that's now the inductance of that inductor. So if I go I times SL, that's the quote voltage, just like V equals IR um, kind of thing. But now I'm gonna have a drop in voltage. So here's a voltage drop. Actually, it's a rise because it's subtracting the rises. Anyway, but basically the first thing I'm going to see as I'm going through because of the passive sign convention is I'm going to see a negative sign and then a plus sign and then I have L I zero from the left. Okay. So that means that if I was doing say a KVL across here, Kirchhoff's voltage law across this, I get IS times SL and then I get minus L I naught which is kind of amazing because now what has happened is instead of having to deal with a stupid problem with initial conditions, I've basically 
force the initial conditions into the sketch of the circuit and now I don't have to worry about it. Okay, it's, it's I don't know, it kind of feels like a stretch because usually you approach this toward the end of the semester and you're just like, I don't really care anymore. And you're like, but you have to because, because grades and stuff and like life goals of careers and stuff. All right, that said, um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna redo this and I'm gonna do this in terms of I because you can actually do them in terms of I or in voltage. So if I, if I just take the previous equation and I just solve for I, I get this, which is cool because I can actually get the same, wait, where did my V go? I lost my V, V, there we go, that could be, that's, that's horrible. All right, um, okay, so now what I can actually do is I can either redraw it in terms of that, ooh, Hold on, I forgot to mention, this is actually really important. This here, this whole thing is that voltage drop, Vs. Okay, so the voltage drop now goes across both of them, not just across one or the other. Okay, that was important. All right. So we're going to do the same thing here. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a current, whoa, I'm going to have a current coming in here. And I'm going to give you the answer, and then I'm going to talk you through it. So essentially, I'm going to do two things in parallel. All right, now I still want the voltage drop to be the same because that's kind of the rules is I can't change the current and I can't change the voltage from the um, point of view of the, um, of the terminals. So one of these currents is going to be Vs over SL. The other current is going to be I0 over S. So that one's actually a little bit easier to do. So that current is going to be I not over s okay and now the other current so remember that v was equal to s v of s was equal to s l times the um, current so similarly the current would be equal to v s over s l so all i need to do now is create a inductor that now has an inductance of SL. So if I come through here, the current going through this section, and this one I think is a little bit harder for at least me to picture. I can I picture voltage things in series a lot better than I picture things in parallel. But in any case, um, the voltage across this and the SL is going to mean that the current that goes through here is V over SL. And the current that goes through here, well, is I over that. So that means that whatever is coming in has to come out. That means that IS is equal to those two. All right, so point being that what we can do now is we can replace a um, inductor with an initial condition using Laplace transforms. We can either, depending on our preference, we can either replace it with um, two things with a voltage source in series or with a current source in parallel. And it's just obviously going to depend on whatever we're trying to do with the circuit to make it go a little bit more straightforward, easier for whatever it is application we're trying to do or whatever math we're trying to do. But it's just one of those really neat little tricks about the Laplace transform. You can actually do these, um, you know, just at will and automatically incorporate those initial conditions. Now, we can actually do this as well with, um, with the capacitors. So I recommend that you take a minute and actually try to figure this out on your own, just kind of pattern match your way to the answer, um, which is of course in no way required or necessary since I have no way of enforcing it, um, but it will help you understand it a little bit better. But see if you can kind of apply the same concept where you have a capacitor with a current coming in and a voltage drop across that capacitor and see what happens and see how you can um, make a similar um, conclusion. So we'll, we'll pretend you did that. So <laughs> I've got that I is equal to C dV dt. And if I come in here and I take the Laplace of both sides, I'll get I at S is equal to C. And then again, SVS minus V naught. Okay. So now we're actually going to do the current one first. So I've got C 
S V S minus C V naught. And so this picture is I'm going to have a current coming in and that current is going to give me so in this case you see there's actually a negative current so instead of having the two things added together as I had in the previous example I have two things subtracted from each other which means this one needs to go up instead of down so if it's coming in this way that guy's actually kind of working against it now if I still have the voltage drop here that's easy peasy CS C V naught oops C V naught okay and this actually is going to give you the same thing because you have these two coming in say this one going out so you have IS and C V not coming in and you have um, CS over um, oh sorry I didn't mean to say CS one I'm gonna say one over CS silly me and you have um, since V equals say IR V equals I one over CS so I is equal to VCS there we go is equal to CS which is the same thing we have if I just move that over to the left. Very exciting. <laughs> well, yeah, like I said, I actually like the other version better. So assuming you've done that, go ahead and um, to complete out the thought, let's go ahead and redraw all of this in terms of voltage. So the voltage will come out to be 1 over SC, IS plus V naught over S. And like I said, for some reason, I can just picture voltage a little bit better, but eventually we need them both. But these are going to be in series. Did I draw that thing as an inductor? I did. What a silly me. Silly, silly me. Okay. Da da dee doo doo. Ba ba da 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 da. All right. So this one over SC is going to be the uh, capacitance got IS coming in here, VS coming out here, and these are going to be added together, yeah, plus, plus, which means plus, why did I do this? I'm not paying attention. I'm thinking about soup. Soup. There we go. And the not over us. Okay, so clearly I'm gonna get my head in the game. It's it's summer. All right. So if I'm looking and to do the loop around this, and I'll just prove that this is right because I feel like I'm kind of phoning it in right now. Um, <laughs> minus V S plus I S times one over S C, and then plus V not over S equals zero so that clearly Vs is equal to all that mess. All right, so I got the same thing. I got what I was supposed to get. Um, that was my check. All right, so let's, let's zoom out and look at what in the name of all that is holy we're actually doing here. <laughs> all right, so essentially what we've discovered is that we can use Laplace transforms to go through here and take initial conditions and convert um, what do you call these things circuits <laughs> into um, into things that we don't have to deal with initial conditions because we're basically just trying to find ways to lazy our way out of circuits all right so the nice thing about resistors is you can Laplace a resistor and it's still a resistor now the only thing is whenever you plot Laplace an inductor you do still have to take into account its initial conditions so you can either do that by incorporating them as an inductor in series with a voltage or a inductor in parallel with a current source so those are your two options there for the inductor and then you have two options as well for the capacitor which is basically that you can again two things in parallel with a current 
or two things in series with the voltage. So this really just kind of continues to fall into what we've always done, whether it's been source transformation or whatever. We see things with current in parallel. We see things with voltages in series. Um, but again, the whole nice thing about this is it actually incorporates the initial conditions into this um, into this problem. So you can actually work a ton of problems by um, essentially what you can do is if you're given a circuit, you know, like this or whatever, you can Laplace the circuit and you can end up with this where you've got the inductor in series with a, uh, a voltage source. Let's we'll call that our, our actual voltage source. So you can do that. So you can actually take the Laplace of a circuit and get a new circuit and then just solve it that way and then you can you know get your solution and then you can inverse Laplace your solution to get your good solution. Okay? And so that that's that's an effort for, for elsewhere, but that should at least be enough to get you started.